All right, Darren, look, it's been a long time yeah. since you've been here. Can you describe the emotional feelings you felt when you got your hand raised at victory? Just, you know what? I'm not an emotional person, but like, I, I nearly come to a tear. And uh, just like, I've been two years out and it's not only the stress and not fighting, I've had a lot of personal, and I, I'm not one to like go, oh, I've got personal problems, but I have had, but I don't sit there and cry and, you know, just to come back and just have, just that feeling, I've dedicated my whole life to this, do you know what I mean? And so, like, that's it basically, I got the win and, you know, I'm back now and I'm back to stay, I'm, back. I'm, I'm coming through it, I'm coming for everyone. Can you give some insight into what's been going on? Yeah, of course. I got nothing to hide. Like you know, I, obviously I lived in Brazil. I had me camp over there, and I also I've always had me camp in uh, in England with me master Colin Heron, and obviously me master Marcelo Brigadeiro. But like you know, I went through a time where I split up with my girlfriend, who's the mother of my child. So you know, we we had our own place together. So finding another place, and you know, the UFC they they're great towards me, but they don't pay a, a monthly wage, and I basically live off fighting. So. You know, I had to worry about money problems, and if it wasn't for me last fight about winning the bonus, you know, things would have been tougher. And you know, I wanted to bring me camp back to England, you know, with me master Colin to work more on me striking and evolve a few techniques. So, just basically everything rolled up into two years. You know, shoulder surgery. I had to find three different surgeons to to make sure my shoulder was 100%. So, you know, all that. I'm not sitting here crying, but that's what I've had to go through. So now, to, tonight, to get the win again and stay undefeated and. I'm the best welterweight in the world, it's phenomenal. So considering those problems that you had, both you know, financially and then physically and then like emotionally, yeah. did you feel any kind of ring rust or did anything feel different getting back in Yeah, there? like I've got, a, I've got a lot of fighting experience, even though for me age, I've been fighting since I was 12 and I've been fighting in the streets when I was a kid as well. So, but it, it, it Jesson's a good fighter, you know, hats off to him, but he was hitting me with some shots what I, I shouldn't be getting hit with because you know, I feel like I'm an elite striker, but you know, that that's what happens. And I felt like the first round, even though my coach Conley said lay off him a bit, I just felt like a few things here and there, but I think towards the second and the third round, I found me timing with him. Like I was moving out of shots and he wasn't able to find me, you know what I mean? And I like getting hit as well, so I let him hit me a bit, you know. <laughs> what happened with the, the weight cut situation? This just, I've always done my weight cut in a certain way, you know, I, I'm known by. The I've, I've took a fight on nine days for the UFC and I've made the welterweight division. You know, I've never, never, ever missed weight. I'm a professional. I do everything professionally. But I think, I don't think, I think I'm 99% sure because of me long two year stretch out, my body was just went into shock mode on them last few pounds because I, I was doing everything the way I do it. And the last few pounds, I'm sitting there in a bath and a sauna and I'm not sweating and I'm, I'm you know, I wasn't completely exhausted I was you know I was in a bit of a state but they just weren't shifting and I, I put it down to having such a long layoff so right now I, I was a little bit heavy a few weeks ago next time when I fight I'm gonna get my weight a little bit lower just so none of this problem comes again I know people you know I'm just gonna take the shit what everyone's gonna give me because that's how fighting is you know people miss weight but I'm I don't like it but you know I missed weight you know what can I do I've give Jesson 30% of me pay he can have it you know fair is fair and I had to weigh in at 85 kilos today at one o'clock so I did that as well so you know after after I missed weight I came through all the right regulations and you know what can I say you know everyone who wants to give me shit on Twitter you know go on give me shit <laughs> Overall, though, just uh, you know, despite from a little bit of ring rust and getting hit more how did you feel about your performance in general and about the result I felt like my performance was great I felt I there was loads of mistakes. Next week, I'm, I'll be sitting down with me coach Colin, and I'll be FaceTiming me master in Brazil, Brig. But yeah, I felt like the fans, you know, it was the second fight of the night. Usually fans, they're all waiting for the main event. They're all waiting for the co-main. They were on the feet when I was, you know, second round. I was cheering them on. They were on the feet. They were screaming for me. The first round, it was a bit stale, which was our game plan. But I felt like I, I felt like I showed the UFC who the king is, who's the new prospect on the block. That's what I felt like. And who does the, the new prospect on the block like getting back into a cage with next time? Um, I'm, I'm not bothered. I feel like I'm at a point in, in my career now where I don't, you know, name call and I'm not really at that stage. You know, I feel like when I start breaking into the top 15, then I'll start calling out people. But right now, it's just about knocking all the other prospects. Jesson's on a seven way fight win streak, meant to be the top, the, the best prospect in Europe, you know, and I've just played with him for three rounds so you know who's the next prospect I'll just knock him off the block as well
because I'm the king. Do you care <laughs> where you fight? you prefer Europe or anywhere else? No, I can fight anywhere. I can fight in the back garden if the, if the UFC want to do a show there, sell some tickets. No, I, I don't care. I've, I've fought in Brazil where the same, you know, ooh, vai morrer, you know, you're going to die. I, I don't care. I, I'm a fighter. I, I come from a fight, the fighting streets. You know, I'm a gangster. <laughs> and there's a Glasgow car coming up as well, and uh, Rotterdam is... Yeah, I was speaking to my coach about Rotterdam because uh, you've got Thailand, I feel like you've got Thailand, England and Amsterdam, I feel like they're the top, you know, and a few other Europe, I feel like they're the top striking countries in the world, that's what I feel like. Uh, so if I was to go to Rotterdam and showcase some striking skills there, I feel like that's the perfect, you know, that's that's good for me to, to do that, but uh, Glasgow maybe is a bit close, you know what, uh, I wanna. I've, I've been training really hard. Like the way the way could could have fucked me up a bit uh, with, with regards to cardio and that. I got through them three rounds. Then I breezed through them just because of how hard I've been training in the gym with me coach Colin. It's a nightmare. So right now Glasgow, no. I'll be going to watch it, but maybe Rotterdam, yeah, because I've got no injuries. You know, I, I'm fine. I'll be back in the gym next week training hard. I go to Mackey's tonight though. <laughs> It's amazing to see you kind of speak in Portuguese uh, in the door. Yeah. Just going to give us a, uh, I know you mentioned it to Dan in the, in the Occupy, <coughs> just give us a full of translation as to what you said there. There's two things, uh, I, I, and I was playing this out the whole week of this this uh, this week in, in the, uh, the UFC and the Hilton and that, and I've been playing it out in my mind while I've been jogging on the streets of uh, Liverpool for the past few weeks. I wanted to, my, my dream was to win this fight now and get on the mic and say hello to my daughter who hasn't seen me in, you know, six months and uh, say hello to, to the mother of, you know, my ex-girlfriend, Jizza, who's, who's the best mother in the world. And there was another thing that I said, there was about, you know, when I was fighting, when I got to the UFC and I had two fights and everyone was saying, oh, this is the no, new prospect, and I had my shoulder surgery, and people weren't seeing me train, people were seeing me out of shape, you know, and it was a long time, like, being inactive. A lot of people, mainly in Brazil, didn't really believe in me come back, like, and I know who them, peop them people are, you know, so I just basically said to them, like, you know, just suck it. I know you didn't believe in me come back, so just suck it. It translates weird into Brazilian, but that's what I said to them. So I hope they were watching. You know, no hard feelings, but that's what I want. I just wanted to express myself. 